So what's going on guys, Cades here and welcome back to a brand new video. For today I will show you the new patch notes and about few weeks ago we already got a PTR server patch notes. But after players tested the new changes, developers removed some buffs and added some different nerfs. So here are the new updated changes that are coming in this next patch. So overall I will look into each and every single class and I will explain what nerfs or buffs it got and then at the end of the video I will summarize everything. So you will know which classes are good now, which are bad, which ones are in the new meta and much more. So if this sounds interesting to you then let's get right into it. So then moving over to the first class which is the dead blade and this one was nerfed the most from all the other classes. So first of all the earth cleaver frontal attack affix was removed and most importantly the surge class engraving was massively nerfed. So if you are using the surge build you will definitely want to change for the remaining energy because now dead blade surge is cast in the max level of surge zero form regardless of the number of dead orbs you have. Surge enhancement effect is stacked every 0.4 seconds. This effect increases dead blade surge damage up to 100, 110 and 120% based on the stacks and additionally attack power is increased by 0.05 and 1% per stack. So in a quick summary, because of this nerf, dead blade surge build has harder time to build up orbs. So this means that you will do less DPS and it will require for you to use more skill to do even decent amount of damage. So dead blades are no longer the easy class that you can just play and turn off your brain to do high damage. So then going over to the second class which is the Shadow Hunter and the rush ability got a 1 meter distance increase, slasher counter attack affix was added, grind chain quick prep tripod was changed, demonic slash skill collision was removed, rising claw was switched from frontal attack to back attack. Hell cooldown was increased by 6 seconds and the skill damage was reduced by 16%. And then lastly Ruining Rush and Dead Claw both got added a debuff effect that increases their damage taken by 6% for 6 seconds. So in a quick summary the Shadow Hunter got a nice plus 6% flat damage increase. Sure bunch of abilities, one or two other things was added or removed but in general you won't see big build changes or big difference in playstyle. So if you ever needed more damage to your Shadow Hunter then here are your plus 6 percent so then going over to the next class which is the sharpshooter and this one got a pretty nice buff that basically changes up your playstyle and give you a lot more damage so now instead of the sharpshooter being unpopular and bad class now it is a good class but still unpopular so now sharpshooter skill generates more gauge deadly slash and stalker skills both got their frontal attack removed automatic arrow got added weak point damage to level 1 and charge shot got increased weak point damage from level 1 to level 2 then sharpshooter and snipe both got increased crit damage then now your awakening gauge skill recovers 30% faster and then lastly both class engraving called dead shike and loyal companion got a nice buffs to 4, 9, 14% and additionally the dead shiker got a 2 to 4% damage increase depending on the engraving level. So in a quick summary the sharpshooter playstyle was changed because of a bug that developers now call as a feature and now I actually recommend for players to play this class and on top of the damage and playstyle change you can spend less money for sharpshooter builds. So then for the 4th class we have the Artillerist and this one got a nice plus 5% overall damage buff. So then the Gatling Gun, Flamethrower and Gravity Explosion, back attacks were removed, homing barrage and air raid both staggered damage was reduced to low, then multiple rocket launcher, napalm shot and swing all got increased staggered damage to high, then barrage focus fire range was increased by 50%. HP of a heavy turret skill was increased by 300% and then lastly the enter barrage mode can be instantly cancelled which is a very small but nice addition to have. So overall the artillerist got not a huge buff but a nice plus 5% damage increase. And then the rest of the ability changes are very minor. So if you ever were looking to play artillerist then now is definitely the time to try this class out. So then moving over to the next class which is the dead eye. And this one got a very little changes like enforced execution, frontal attack was removed, 
pushback distance was reduced on tripods, but then lastly and most importantly, the pistoler class engraving got a huge buff that went from 30, 40 and 60% to 30, 50 and 70%. So then in a quick summary, the die is still a very hard class to play, but you can do a massive amount of damage. But the only thing that actually has changed is that before the only viable build was to play enhanced weapon, and now the pistoler build has changed, and both these class engravings and builds are very viable and good options for players to choose. So then going over to the next one which is the Gunslinger. And Peacekeeper's skill attack type was changed from frontal attack to back attack. Then bullets rain damage was increased by 23%. And then lastly the class engraving which is called the time to hunt got a nice crit rate increase from 20, 27 and 35 to 20, 30 and 40%. So in a quick summary the Gunslinger got a overall 2-3% damage increase. And especially if you play the time to hunt build, now it's even more better than ever. So overall this class got a small buff, but I would count all Gunslingers as lucky for not getting a significant nerf. So then moving over to the first class which is the Sorceress. And in the first PTR, this class got a huge nerf. But now from the updated patch notes, the Sorceress Igniter build was nerfed only by 6%. And this class is still one of the best and most consistent damage dealers in the game. So then Ice Shover counter attack was added, Squall attack tap was changed from frontal attack to back attack. And then lastly both identity stages got a 1-2% damage nerf. So in a quick summary, like I said the Sorceress Igniter was only nerfed by 5-6% and it is still very good. So if I would be a Sorceress player I would be very happy with the results and that almost no abilities were changed whatsoever. So then moving over to the last and final mage which is the Bard. And this class Prelude of Storm skill got a counter attack added. And Sound Shock, Stigma, Node Bundle, Harp of Rhythm and Rhapsodia of Light all got 1 second increase for their tripods. So in a quick summary, this class wasn't changed whatsoever. And at least in my opinion, both support classes are in a great state and they are not overpowered whatsoever. So I would say that not changing them is definitely the way to go. So then moving over to the next one which is called Scrapper. And this class's all skills got a huge damage increase by 24%, except the auto slash basic attacks. So then charging blow, fierce tiger strike and continuous push all got a tripod damage increase and damage reduction increase. And then the next 4 abilities called the judgment, roundup sweep, critical blow and shredding strike all got their attack type change from frontal attack to back attack. And then lastly the blast of ruination and class engraving Tayutsu, both of them got a nice damage increase by 5%. So in a quick summary, one of the biggest buffs and biggest winners was the scrapper class and this patch. And if before you can do much damage, then now you should be able to dominate any dungeon and get an easy MVP. So then moving over to the Solfist and this class in the PTR was nerfed pretty nicely. But after a lot of players expressed their concern, most nerfs were removed and this class is basically the same now, without any significant nerfs and even with a small plus 7% damage increase for only skills. The only changes that were kept is the energy bullet now shoots 40% faster, energy blast damage is increased by 11% and bolt and crash attack tap was changed from frontal attack to back attack and that's about it. So in a quick summary, this class is a big winner because it didn't get nerfed and if you were worried about the Solfest class then now you know that it is still good and hasn't been really changed. So then going over to one of the last martial artists which is the striker. And similarly like the Solfist, the striker hasn't been changed and the only difference is that sky shattering blow and esoteric skill called spiral impact abilities both got their attack type changed from frontal attack to back attack and that's about it. So then taking a closer look at the Void Dancer and this class got a nice damage buff but I still personally don't like this class as it takes too much skill and to build up your dam it takes way too much time. But basically the Void Dancer got the damage of all normal skills increased by 18% and the Esoteric skills and Awakening skills got a flat 14% damage increase as well. The Vince Whisper Mana Recovery Speed was increased, Sky Shattering Blow and Spiral Impact both got their attack type changed from Frontal Attack to Back Attack and then lastly the class engraving called First Intention was buffed from 15, 20 and 25 to 6 16, 24 and 32 percent. So overall I still don't recommend the War Dancer but if you're a hardcore fan then this class definitely got a pretty nice buff. 
So then going over to one of the newest classes, which is the Glavier, aka the Lance Master. In the Vault and Wheel of Blades ability, attack tabs got changed from frontal attack to back attack. And then the rest of the red skills, which are main damage dealers like Red Dragon's Horn, Trust of Destruction, Spiraling Spear, Four-Headed Dragon and Starfall Pounds, all got a nice damage buff. So overall the Glavier was slightly buffed, but I definitely think that this class should get a lot bigger change, and a lot bigger buff than in this patch. So Glavier hasn't changed much, except a bit of DPS increase from the red skills. But if you use the control engraving build, then basically nothing has changed. So then moving over to the Berserker, and this is one of the craziest classes that on paper looks like it got a nerf, but actually it's pretty untouched. And especially if you're playing the Mayhem build, then the value in parties for Berserkers has gone up by a lot. Because now the Berserkers damage is basically the same, their Red Dust ability has 100% uptime synergy, and you can use other fan as Mayhem as well. So overall the Berserker has now a 100% uptime and a nice 6% buff that every single player in your party will really like. So yeah, the two abilities called Chain Sword and Crime Hazard has changed from Frontal Attack to Back Attack, then Hellblade, Sword Storm and Red Dust on paper do a bit less damage and that's about it. The developers tried to nerf the Mayhem and buff the Berserker's technique, but what they did is still made both builds very good, and because of the 100% uptime and 6% buff, the Berserker is still a very good class, and it feels like it has been basically untouched, except now you don't want to use the Hellblade skill, but that's about it. So then moving over to one of the last classes, which is the Gun Lancer. And all of these three skills called Surge Cannon, Charge Stinger and Counter Gun Lance got a nice tripod buff. And then lastly the Shield Bash ability got a weak point damage added. So in a quick summary, nothing much has changed for Gun Lancers, except a slight buff and adjustment for these three abilities and that's about it. So then moving over to the next class, which is the Paladin. And this is the second support class that got increased damage to all punishing skills for 4.8%. Then the punishment, executor sword and holy sword, attack taps were changed from frontal attack to back attack. And then lastly and most importantly, the sacred executioner was buffed from 100% for all three levels to 100, 125% and 150%. So now the judgment class engraving is actually worth to upgrade to level 3 instead of keeping it at level 1. So in a quick summary, like most support classes, nothing really was changed. Besides now in chaos dungeons you'll be able to do a bit more damage as the paladin DPS and that's about it. So then moving over to the last and final class which is the Destroyer. In Gravity Impact, Power Strike, Jumping Smash, Earth Smasher and Running Crush all got a 1 Gravity Core increase. Then Dreadnought, Endor Pain and Perfect Swing got a nice tripod buffs. And then lastly the Earth Eater skill cooldown was increased by 6 more seconds. So in a quick summary, Destroyer got a slight buff, but this class is still very consistent in fights with its super high staggered damage. And like per usual, by playing Destroyer, getting an MVP should not be hard. Both class engravings called Rage Hammer and Gravity Training weren't much changed, so no matter which build you choose, both of them are good options, and with the new ability changes you will get a nice DPS boost, and that's about it. So then in my final conclusions for this Lost Ark patch. The way I see it is that big buffs got Shadow Hunter, Sharpshooter and Scrapper. Then decent buffs got Artillerist, Deadeye, Voidancer, Glavier and Destroyer. Then no real big changes had Gunslinger, Bard, Soulfist, Striker, Gunlancer and Paladin. Then on top of all this the biggest nerfs were the Deadblade and Sorceress. And then lastly I have the Berserker class, which I'm not sure where I want to put it. Because technically it was nerfed. But because of the 100% uptime and the 6% buff, the Berserker is still really good and feels like it's untouched, so I will just keep it in his separate own category. And then lastly I wanted to explain that Lost Ark doesn't give us patch note numbers, like other game developers. So I titled this video as 0.03 patch, because since release there have been only two big updates in March and April, so then in the May this is the third one. So I just wanted to quickly explain myself and that's about it. So I really do appreciate everyone for watching guys and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any suggestions, feedback or other good Lost Ark ideas or guides that you would like to see in the next video, then feel free to leave your comments in the comment section down below. And while you're doing that, please click like, subscribe and enable that notification bell, so this way you could support the channel and you won't miss any more amazing content from me. With all this said, you have an amazing day and I will catch you in my next video. So take it easy, peace.